Okay. Okay, students, now uh, we will go back into lesson 8.1, food chains and food webs. All right. Now in today's class, we are going to go over the pyramids, yes? Now, you remember we said the pyramids are constructed to represent different relationships between organisms all living in one ecosystem. Now we said we have different kinds of pyramids and each kind we draw or we construct to represent a specific kind of relationship. Now, for example, you see, we have the first kind of pyramid we will talk about is the pyramid of numbers. Now, remember, previously we said that we construct these pyramids or that we draw the pyramids of numbers for what purpose? For creating a graphical representation that shows the number of organisms at each trophic level. So if I want to know an estimation, so to speak, it's not an exact number, that, but if I want to know an estimated number of the living things, I am expected to find at each trophic level, you will notice that I will be drawing or constructing a pyramid of numbers. Basically, how do we construct this pyramid of numbers? What we do is the following. I look at a food chain, which is represented to me in the question. And I think, all right, so what am I dealing with here? Ah, uh, there's grass which is the producer, there's rabbits, which are the primary consumers, and then there are fleas, the secondary consumers, and at the same time, the last organisms in a food chain. The fleas are um, uh, small animals that live on the bodies of mammals and suck their blood. Anyway, so, I go ahead and ask myself the following question. The grass is eaten by the rabbit. All right then, how many pieces of grass which must each rabbit eat to feel full? I would suppose that each rabbit would need to eat about uh, uh, four uh, to 20 pieces of grass to become full, I mean, of course, Eating one piece of grass will never be enough for the rabbit to feel full. So the rabbit will eat about 20 pieces of grass to feel full. All right, excellent. So compared to the number of rabbits, the number of grasses will be larger because again, each rabbit will need to eat many pieces of grass. Each rabbit will not be only able to eat one piece of grass. So, when I draw the pyramid of numbers, which again is constructed to represent how many organisms are estimated to be at each trophic level, what I will do is the following. I will draw the block for grasses to be quite large and the block for rabbits to be quite small. Why? Again, because the number of grasses will be a lot larger than the number of rabbits because each rabbit will need to eat about 20 pieces of grass to feel fun. Now, do you have any questions so far, anyone, about why did we draw the block for grass to be quite large? 
and we drew the block for rabbits to be quite small. Ah, Muhammad. Sure, I just want to make sure that uh, the the number of ra uh, rabbits is this because the rabbits will eat and uh, uh, because because if there is a lot of because each rabbit needs twenty uh, pieces of grass. Yes. If there is a lot, uh, the rabbits will not have enough because. Aywa. Exactly. Exactly. That is exactly the point, Yeah, Muhammad. Yes. Uh, okay. Thanks, teacher. All right. Now, any other questions, students? Yes, yeah, honey. Teacher, what does the number of birds depend? No, forget the birds. I'm talking about the food chain on the left now, yes? Okay, so like the last, the last animal on the pyramid, what does it represent? What do you mean, what does it represent? Hey, hey, we will, I will, yeah, I will, what does it depend on, its number? Okay, yeah, I will explain this now in a second. Okay, again, in regards to grass and rabbits only, do you have any questions? Okay, excellent. Now, let us look at the second relationship in this food chain. Let's talk about the relationship between the numbers of rabbits and the numbers of fleas. Again, I repeat, fleas are small animals that live on the body of rabbits and suck their blood, yes? Now, as you can see, the flea is a very, very small animal. So, okay, many fleas, about hundreds of fleas, sometimes thousands of fleas, could live on the body of one rabbit. But, okay, because this rabbit is a small one, if you can see, it's got a small size. So then we say that about 10, seven fleas will live on the body of this rabbit because it's small. Anyway, so I can see that if I compare the number of rabbits in the food chain to the number of fleas in the food chain. I will notice that the number of rabbits will be a lot less than the number of fleas. Again, because on the body of each rabbit, about 10 fleas will live and feed. So I will have many fleas and very little rabbits but still the number of fleas will still be less than the number of grasses in this food chain because we said rabbits feed on about 20 pieces whereas we said each rabbit will have about 10 fleas on its body so when i want to construct the block to represent the number of fleas in the food chain what will i do i will draw this block to be larger than the block for the number of rabbits because the fleas are more than rabbits. But at the same time, my block must be smaller, the block for fleas must be smaller than the block for the grasses because the number of fleas are less than the numbers of the grasses. Any questions, students? So we end up this way, constructing a pyramid of numbers, which studies the relationship, or actually it shows the relationship of the numbers of organisms at each trophic level at specific food chains. Let's take a look at the second example, yes? The second example is that of a wood, uh, of, of, of an oak tree, an insect and a woodpecker, all right? Now, an oak tree is one of the most enormous kinds of trees we have. It can grow to be huge. It can actually grow to be massive. So, one oak tree, as you can all suppose and imagine, will be able to feed not only thousands, 
what millions of insects? Again, an oak tree is massive. One oak tree is huge, huge, huge. So, one oak tree is able to feed not only thousands, but millions of insects. So, this is why when I want to represent the number of trees using the pyramid of numbers, then what I'll do is only draw a very thin block. Because again, one tree is, is enough to feed millions of insects. So I will need a very small number of um, um, uh, uh, oak trees to feed a huge, huge, huge number of insects. Any questions? Okay, okay well done. Now, let's compare the second kind of relationship in this food chain you see. Let us compare the relationship between the numbers of insects and the numbers of the woodpeckers. And that we said that we will have a very large number of insects feeding on one oak tree. You think now, using common sense, okay, how many insects would each woodpecker need to eat to feel full? Give me an estimated number. How many insects do you think each woodpecker will need to eat to be full? Aya Faisal. Faisal, I can't unmute you. I believe something is wrong with your mic, miss. Let's see, Tala. About 10 to 15. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, each, each woodpecker will need about um, 10 to 15 insects in order for it to feel full. So, the number of woodpeckers will be less than the number of insects. So, if I want to construct a block that will represent the number of woodpeckers, then I must draw it to be smaller than the a block that represents the numbers of insects. No, my question though is that what organisms in the food chain here will be present in the smallest number? Woodpeckers or oak trees? Yes, Linil Kumi. Um, the oak trees. Ah, because we said one oak tree only can feed thousands of insects. And we said one woodpecker would need to eat about 50 insects. So, still, the number of oak trees is the least. This is why the block we draw for the woodpecker should be smaller than the, the block for insects, but larger than the block for oak trees. Do you understand how do we construct pyramids of numbers based on what kinds of relationships? Yes, Yajud. I'm um, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. No problem, no problem. Again, do you have any questions, students, on how do we construct pyramids of numbers? Okay, just to quickly remind you, just to quickly remind you, when you construct pyramids of numbers, please always remember that there's no rule for you to follow. There's nothing for you to memorize. There are no sets of instructions that you can memorize and then apply in order for you to always construct a pyramid of number. You will have to think. You will have to link. You will have to use your common sense your background knowledge, your general knowledge to construct pyramids of numbers, okay? All right, now. Let's discuss 
The second type of pyramids we have at hand. Let's discuss the pyramid of biomass. You see, before I talk to you about how do we construct such a pyramid, let us go back into the term biomass and discuss it in more details. First of all, in order for you to understand why and how do we construct pyramids of biomass, you must be able to define biomass. You see? We define biomass as We define biomass as the total weight of organisms, regardless of what kind of organism are we um, are talking about, in a given area. Again, biomass is defined as the total weight of organisms in a given area. Now, if I am, for example, looking to measure the biomass of grasses here, then what will I do? I will go into a certain area, for example, a four by five area. And I will take all of the grasses I find and I will measure their masses. This is going to be the biomass of grasses measured. If I want to measure the biomass of lions, what do I do? I go into a certain area, four by five, for example, take all of the lions I can find and measure their masses. That will be the biomass of lions. Generally speaking, good. Pyramids of biomass are most probably going to be um, regular pyramids. This is going to apply 99% of the time. There are some exceptions which we will not be talking about at this level. At this level, it's enough for you to know, students, that 99% of the pyramids of biomass are actually regular pyramids. Yani we start with the largest block. And as we move across the trophic levels, the blocks become smaller up until we, got to the, we get to the last trophic level, which has the smallest block. Why? Because remember we said that in any food chain, the amount of energy transfer decreases as we move along the food chain. Did we or did we not explain this? We said as we move along the food chain, amount of energy transfers in this food chain will decrease. This is why, since the amount of energy transferred in a food chain decreases as we move along the food chain, then, <coughs> then, um, producers are going to have the largest amount of energy possible. And as a result, they will use the largest amount of energy amongst all other organisms in the food chain for growth. And the energy used for growth will be used to make cells. These cells will be measured when I calculate the biomass of the living organisms. So if I collect all of the plants in a given area and I go ahead and measure their masses, their biomass will be the largest because, again, they gain the largest amount of energy in the food chain. And as a result, they were able to use the largest amount of energy for growth. When I move to rabbits or gazelles, which are going to come after the plants, they are going to occupy the second trophic level, if you will. And I measure their masses or their biomass. I will notice that the total biomass will be less than that of the producers. Why? Because less energy was available to the herbivores to use. So they've used less energy for growth. And as a result, their biomass ended to be smaller. Same goes for the um, primary carnivores, like foxes, for example. 
Again, they received less energy than the herbivores and the producers. So if I take all of them in a given area and I measure their mass, I will notice that it will be less than that of the herbivores and less than that of the producers because they received less energy in total. And as a result, they were able to use less energy for growth. Now lions are going to have the smallest biomass, why? Because they are the last organisms in the food chain. So they receive the least amount of total energy. So they were able to use the least amount of energy for growth. This is why if I take all of the lions in a given area and I measure their masses, I will find that their biomass will be the lowest. Do you have any questions? Okay, let's see. Yes, Yelly. Teacher, can we sometimes add a bac bacteria or fungi um, to this pediment? Okay, yes, we can because they are part of food chains. But remember, when we construct a food chain, we usually are concerned with the organisms that we can see. Bacteria and fungi are decomposers, but they are microorganisms, which means we can't see them not without using a microscope. This is why we don't include them. Okay? Naam ya Adam. Yes, Adam. Teacher, I, I didn't un understand how to calculate biomass. Yeah. Well, nothing. You go choose an, a specific area, yes? Uh, okay? In okay. an ecosystem. And whatever organisms you find in that area that belong to the same type, you take them, you collect them. Mm -hmm. And then you measure their masses. Yani, I want to calculate the biomass of rabbits. Okay, I go yeah. to an area and I choose the area to be six by five. You can go choose the area to be 10 by five. It, it doesn't matter, yes? Yes. And then I take all of the rabbits I find in that area and I measure their mass. Uh, the biomass yeah, but... I get is, will, it will be called the biomass of rabbits. Top teacher, if uh, it was a picture, how do we, how do we uh, measure their masses? Again, if it was a what? If it was a picture, we can measure their masses if, uh, if we see them. Yes, yes, if, you, if, if it's a picture, no, you don't need, you need to understand only that most pyramids of biomasses are regular. But Inter, because you, understand, you understood this concept, okay, you draw the pyramid of biomass with the producers having the largest block, and as you move along the food chain, the blocks are going to become smaller, yes? But I was okay. trying to explain to you how scientists construct the pyramid of biomass for organisms. Yes? Based on what ideas? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Let's see. Tala. Tala, I think your mic is not working. I can't unmute you. Maryam. Yes, Mary. Did, you hear it work? Did it work? Okay, yes, yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I'll uh, um, Does it matter how many organisms you take to measure their masses? Like, does you it need, affect the pyramid? Yeah, you need to take all of the organisms you find in a certain area. That's the whole idea, Yatan. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Namia Maria. Maria. Maryam, I believe. Okay, Maryam, hi. Anyway, let's see. And I'm Hamad. Teacher, I want to ask. Uh, Hamad, can you raise your voice a little bit for me to hear to hear clearly? Okay, uh, is this good? No, nah, uh, more. Um, like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, the 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 kg in the in this uh, pyramid represents the number of organism in each trophic level or the no 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 it represents their biomass kilogram this is a unit we measure the mass using no uh, but why did we put like here 100 kilogram because that's how that's the biomass we measured so is there is um uh, yani but but how is the any produce any because uh, the produce but why the producers is one thousand? I don't know how to measure it so much. 
You don't measure it, miss. You just understand that it's a regular pyramid. Why producers have the largest biomass again? Because we find um, in a given area, if I take all of the producers from that area, okay, not one, all the producers from that area, and I measure their mass, I will notice that it will be larger than the mass of herbivores. Again, why is this? Because producers have the largest amount of energy. So they use most of this energy for, or a large amount of this energy for growth. Herbivores receive less energy. So by default, they will use less energy for growth. Okay? Okay. Faisal? Yes, morning, Faisal. Teacher. Morning, Faisal. Teacher, but can you repeat uh, the, the biomass? Again, your sound will... again, so, uh, it is the total mass of all organisms of the same trophic level in a specific area. Okay, I will need to measure a specific area. I will need to take all of the organisms I find in the same trophic level and I will need to measure their masses. The value I receive is the biomass. Okay, teacher, and your son, I think, okay, right. So, any questions now? No. Oh, well, well, no. Now, students, we will uh, stop here for today. And I will meet together with you next week, inshallah. All of you have a nice um, weekend. Now, uh, next week, inshallah, we are going to finish lesson 8.2 and the last concept in lesson 8.1, which discusses the decomposers. Have a good week. <laughs>